So today we are going to learn what is consistent hashing and it is one of the most commonly asked questions during the tech interview and also a widely used concepts in the distributed system, caching, database and etc. So let's understand it completely today. So the first question arises in our mind, why do we need it? And we will discuss everything today. First, let's have a quick introduction to the hash function. It's a mathematical function which always outputs the same when the same input is provided. One of the typical use case of this is to detect a change in any data. If we pass the data through this hash function, it will give us an output and we call that as an hash of that data. If we change the data, it will give us an output which will not match with our previous hash. So in this way, we can compare the hash to find if the data has been changed or not. It means that we can create a hash of anything and it can help in detecting if something has changed or not. So this was one of the use case. Similarly, we can have many, many more use cases. Now let's take an example of load balancing with simple hash function. Suppose we have five servers 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 and we have a request coming from client. We need to map this to the server and we have a hash function like this. So we will pass the request ID to this hash function and it will give us a number as output. So then we will take the remainder of that output with the number of servers which is 5 in our case. Suppose for the request ID 1, hash function could output a number such as 9. In that case, we take the remainder with 5, it gives the final output as 4. So the request will be served from the server 4. Similarly, for the request ID 2, hash function could output a number 6. In that case, we take the remainder with 5, it will give us the final output as 1. So the request will be served from the server 1. As the hash function is uniformly random, we can expect the load to be uniformly random and on average it is equally distributed. So let's take a very simple example just for the sake of understanding and simplicity. So let's say we have 5 servers and we have 100 request ID with unique IDs. In that case we can assume that each server will get 20 requests as we have 5 servers. Server 1 will sort the request ID from 1 to 20 and it can store the data related to these request IDs. Similarly, server 2 will sort the request ID from 21 to 40 and it can store the data related to these request IDs and so on. So here the loads are evenly distributed across the server. All is working perfectly and this is a working solution. But now let's discuss some use cases. Suppose one day one of the servers went down, what will happen? So let's try to replicate this scenario by removing a server from our system. Let's remove the server 4. Now we don't have the server 4 alive. Now the request will start failing for the request ID 61 to 80. So how to solve this problem? What we can do here is that we can adjust in this particular way. Now server 1 will serve the request ID from 1 to 25. It can store the data related to these request IDs and similarly server 2 will serve the request ID from 26 to 50 and it can store the data related to these request IDs and so on. And to handle this we will have to migrate the data and there will be a downtime which we don't need. Now let's take another use case. Suppose our company started growing and the number of users started growing. Who doesn't need it? Now we need to add more servers and let's try to add in our current system. Assume we have four servers in the beginning. Now server one will serve the request ID from one to 25 and it can store the data related to these request IDs. And server 2 will serve the request IDs from 26 to 50 
and it can store the data related to these request IDs and so on. Here our server is added which is server 5. If we don't do anything, if we don't adjust anything, the new server will not serve any request. So what is the use case of that? So we will have to adjust like this. Now server 1 will serve the request ID from 1 to 20 and it can store the data related to these request IDs. Similarly, the server 2 will serve the request ID from 21 to 40 and it can store the data related to these request IDs and so on. Once again, to handle this, we will have to migrate all the data and there will be downtime and we don't need that. So what we have seen now, we have seen that we had no problem at all until we started adding or removing the servers. So when we add and when we remove, we had to do the migration and that causes the downtime. So in order to solve this, we need to learn what is consistent hashing and here comes the consistent hashing into the picture. In order to understand the consistent hashing, we will consider a ring which is something like this. Here we have 0 to m-1 indexes present on the ring and there is a hash function in which we pass the request id which gives us the number ranging from 0 to m-1 and there is an another hash function in which we pass the server id which gives us the number ranging from 0 to m-1. First we need to put our server on this ring using the second hash function. So let's say we have four servers. Server with id 0, 1, 2 and 3. We pass the server id to the second hash function and we get a value and then we take the remainder of that value with m which will give us the index value which is present on the ring. Suppose for all those servers id 0, 1, 2 and 3 we got 4, 11, 16 and 21 as an index. So now we can put the server like this on the ring. Now if any request comes it passes the request id through the first hash function we get a value then we take the remainder of that value with m which gives us the index value which is present on the ring. Suppose the index is 11. No problem at all here is our server. What if for a request the index is 13? We need to go clockwise and find the nearest server which is at the 16th index in our case and that's it, it will work. It's important to note that it always goes clockwise to find the nearest server. And now assume the case of removal or the addition of a server because of the way we have mapped when we do removal or the addition only the immediate neighbor gets affected. So we have to make minimal changes to make it work. Let's try to remove the server id which is present at the 16th index on the ring. Now for example if any request comes and for that we get the index 16th and we don't have a server at that index. So there is no problem we will go clockwise and we will find the nearest server at the 21st index and that's it and it will work. Here we just had to migrate the data from the server id 2 to the server id 3 and only the immediate neighbor got affected. So we had to make minimal changes to make it work. But now we have another problem. The distribution is not even. Now if you see closely here most of the requests are getting handled by a single server which is also handling the load which were earlier handled by the server id 2. In order to make it a uniformly distributed system we need to introduce the idea of virtual node. Virtual node which is the virtual server for us here. For that let's introduce the multiple hash function. Now we have more hash function like this. It will help us in create more places for a single server. If you see here it is telling us to put the server at many places on the ring. But ideally one thing can be present at one place at a time. So we need the virtual servers so that we can put that at many places on the ring. So that's why we needed the virtual server. Here one server sits at multiple places along the ring as they are virtual. So now this will look like this. 
Now let's try to remove a server and this will look like this. The load distribution will be even as we have removed many similar servers from many places not from a single place. Similarly if we add a new server again the load distribution will be even as we have added many similar servers at many places now this solves our problem. More things which we can do here is we can add more hashing function to the particular server which is having the more capacity. It will live at more places on the ring and it will serve more requests compared to other servers. This way we are able to solve all the problems and this is consistent hashing. So now we can answer the question what is consistent hashing. That's it for now. So please like, share and subscribe to this channel and have a great learning ahead.